This is Twit. Okay, last Tuesday, the U.S. Uh, NIST, right, our National Institute of Standards and Technology, announced that the results of a six-year, these things do take a while, and I'm glad this is not something you want to rush because we're going to be living with this for a long time, the six-year competition among a set of post-quantum algorithms had resulted in the selection of four initial algorithms. That is because there are going to be a total of eight. So the first half have now been chosen. After editing out the various self-congratulatory statements from various bureaucrats who have no clue what this is all about and who certainly didn't even write what they are quoted as saying in NIST's official announcement. I read through this as like, oh, come on. <laughs> you have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> what are you talking I, I, about? I've always been a fan of elliptic curve cryptography. And, <laughs> that's uh, right. Uh, I, I use it to clean my sheets every, <laughs> every week. Uh, so here's what the, the, uh, the, the people who actually wrote the something about this and were involved in the choosing had to say they said the u.s department of commerce's national institute of standards and technology nist has chosen the first group of encryption tools that are designed to withstand the assault of a future quantum computer which could potentially crack the security used to protect privacy in the digital systems we rely on every day as in today such as online banking and email software the four selected encryption algorithms will become part of nist's post quantum cryptographic standard expected to be finalized in about two years the announcement follows a six-year effort managed by nist but like not in any way poisoned by them. This has all been done open on GitHub in full public view, managed by NIST, which in 2016 called upon the world's cryptographers to devise and then vet encryption methods that could resist an attack from a future quantum computer, that is, you know, one with more than four qubits, that is more powerful than the comparatively limited machines available today. Today's selection constitutes the beginning of the finale of the agency's post-quantum cryptography standardization project. And this is clearly a good thing. You know, they, I don't remember, Leah, whether they were able to f f do the... F factorization of what was it 33 or it was something some ridiculous uh, number yeah it's yeah. like oh okay oh, how hard we, we is have, that huh we don't have to we don't have to worry about it right now i have uh, to say we are making progress so uh, I, this was a story a couple of days ago that scientists in germany have showed spooky action at a distance of 20 miles Ooh, uh, two nice. atoms so that's when wow. the that's when you know the quantum entanglement yeah quantum entanglement and the, and the two atoms somehow are communicating instantaneously across and, and a Leo, distance of 20 miles speed not at light speed much faster instantaneously yeah yeah which tells tells you you know definitely a simulation okay <laughs> or, or there's some dimension we don't know about in which those two atoms are right next to each other or are the same thing or the See, same the thing whole or idea of yeah. space could be just an illusion, right. right? There isn't actually any. It's, it's just it's mind boggling that they're it that is they're doing it. This. Does, I mean, it, it does it hurts. It hurts. Yes. It hurts. Yes. Uh, okay. Four additional algorithms are under consideration still for inclusion in the standard, and NIST plans to announce the finalists from that round at a future date. NIST is announcing its choices, they wrote, in two stages because of the need for a robust variety of defense tools. As cryptographers have recognized from the beginning of NIST's effort, there are different systems and tasks that use encryption, and a useful standard would offer solutions designed for different situations. And that's, yes, you know, how many times have we, we talk about the toolbox that we have today and how cool it is that you can just put these things, these little components together in all different ways. Um, so... 
uh, use varied approaches for encryption and offer more than one encry- one algorithm for each use case in the event one proves vulnerable. And that's what they've done here. Uh, you know, this is like we're it feels like we're beginning to understand collectively, you know, as a planet how to do these sorts of things correctly. So explaining this for the masses, NIST added, encryption uses math to protect sensitive electronic information, including the secure websites we surf and the emails we send. Widely used public key encryption systems, which rely on math problems that even the fastest conventional computers find intractable, Ensure these websites and messages are inaccessible to unwelcome third parties. However, a sufficiently capable quantum computer, which would be based on different technology than the conventional computers we have today, could solve these math problems quickly to defeat today's encryption systems. To counter this threat, The four quantum-resistant algorithms rely on math problems that both conventional and quantum computers should have difficulty solving, thereby defending privacy both now and down the road. Okay, I got a tough question for you. Do we now trust NIST? Because remember, they intentionally recommended a weak algorithm at the behest... Of the National yeah. Security Agencies. Yeah, and I would say those were days b- gone by. Yeah. Um, I, 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 there's no cryptographer who doesn't know that this, this, you know, this random bit generator that the RSA, that RSA Corporation was sort of defaulting to had some had some sketchy background you know mm. there there was there was no reason for the NSA not to describe where the magic numbers came from that 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 digital random bit generator used but and and that would have made everyone feel good if somebody had said this is how we chose these numbers then everyone would have gone, okay, that makes sense instead it was thou shalt use these numbers. Yeah. And it was like, uh, that's not the way we do things here. So, and you know, it, and, and the point is, it wasn't the way, it sort of was the way we did things then because nobody was that focused on those things. Now we really are. So I don't think that could ever happen again. Uh, I mean, and so, so this is a, th- th- this was done very much like the way Reindahl was chosen, where a number of like really good candidates were examined and and sample implementations code was created and things like how fast can we make this work on a 64 bit x you know 64 architecture and can we can we design algorithms which will not be subject to to side channel attacks i mean just think about everything we've learned in the last 20 years all of that is now rolled into this and you know, lots of debate. That's why it took six years, uh, you know, to, to decide this. So <clears throat> in this case, these first four of the eight total algorithms, the first four are designed for two main tasks for which, as we know, encryption of or crypto is typically used. General encryption, which is used to protect information exchanged across a public network and digital signatures used for identity authentication. All four of the algorithms were created by academic experts collaborating openly from multiple countries and institutions. To provide for general encryption, NIST, and it's it's not NIST as much as it's the the collective, and that's just it. NIST is sort of just sort of saying, yeah, you know, we're going to do the press release. But it was this, it wasn't NIST that chose it, is I guess by, is the point. It was everybody coming to an, a final agreement that, okay, to do encryption, we're going to use the crystals Kyber algorithm, which is what was chosen for encryption. Uh, and, um, and it was chosen because it uses comparatively small encryption keys, which two parties will be able to exchange easily, as well as very good 
speed of operation. On the digital signatures side, NIST and the collective selected three algorithms. I like this first one. I do too, Leo. <laughs> it's the dilithium crystals algorithm. <laughs> yes. We've got, and then we also have Falcon and we have Sphinx. Uh, it's actually Sphinx Plus because there was some tweaking that was done later. So it's S-P-H-I-N-C-S -S plus sign, which we're supposed to read as Sphinx Plus. Uh, reviewers noted the high efficiency of the first two. And NIST recommends Crystal's Dilithium to be used as the primary algorithm with Falcon for applications that need smaller signatures than Dilithium is able to provide. The third, and this is, again, why the thinking was so good on this, Sphinx Plus is somewhat larger and slower than the other two. But it's valuable to have as a backup for the reason that it is based on entirely different math than all th of the other three NIST selections. The other ones are based on lattice math, and Sphinx isn't. So again, we've learned that where crypto is concerned, there's nothing wrong with using a belt and some suspenders. Uh, the, as I said, the first three of the four selected algorithms are based on a family of math problems known as structured lattices, which is why the word crystal appears as part of the names of the first two, while Sphinx Plus uses hash functions. Now, the next four algorithms to be chosen, which are still under consideration, are designed for general encryption and do not use structured lattices or hash functions in their approaches. So, again, we're going to do like we're looking at a variety of different solutions to like in advance. And and once we deploy these, all of them will be selectable in the various algorithms so that if something is found to be wrong, it'll be like, whoops, and it'll be easy to just, you know, switch over. Or remember how the early versions of TrueCrypt allowed you to use like multiple different algorithms uh, like at once under the theory that, well, if one of them was broken, then, you know, the other ones would, would still be good. So anyway, we, we, we sort of have a little bit of that too. So NIST wrote, while the standard is in development, NIST encourages security experts to explore the new algorithms. Oh, all the sources public, by the way, and, and, and post it online. And that's why and, we shouldn't worry about NIST being involved in this, obviously. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, th they really weren't. They were, just, again, based on, the, Leo, that text that I excluded from the announcement, you would know that whoever it was who wrote that Senator nonsense. Foghorn Leghorn <laughs> believes that crystal lattices is are the finest way to protect yourself. Yeah. That's exactly yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, boy. So they said, while the standard is in development, NIST encourages security experts to explore the new algorithms to consider how their applications will use them, but not to bake them into their systems quite yet, as the algorithms could change slightly before the standard is finalized. Can we use these uh, if they're not baked? I mean, can we use them now? Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean, they've been pounded. They've had the crap pounded out of them yeah, already. They're pretty well baked. I, I, yeah, I think it's yeah, it's it's likely that they're pretty much. But yeah. they're just you know again, they're hedging their bets. They don't want to be like have fingers pointed at them saying, "Hey, you said these were final, right. and we burned it into our firmware yes. and sent it up into outer space." So it's like, no, okay, you don't yeah, you know don't, don't do, do that, that quite don't yet. Don't do that. So, you but know, e uh, what e tools Elon like my is PG welcome to use them right <laughs> yes, now? Use them all you want, Elon. Uh, uh, PGP or, I mean, what kind of tools? TLS, I guess. Yes? Would it be? Yeah, yeah. Um, basically, you know, our crypto uses signatures all over the place and uses encryption all over the place. Yeah, I and use so PGP for that, which, of course, is an ancient and kind of crapulous bundle of algorithms, none of which are these. Yeah, we could hope that PGP does not incorporate these. <laughs> so that once quantum computing comes along, eh, 
oh, sorry, PGP. Yeah. It's a uh, your, your time is bad. SSH though would probably implement it. Uh, I would. Imagine. Oh, oh, I, there. Well, yeah. You mean, uh, yeah. TLS definitely would. Yeah. Uh, and 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 it'll be used for hashing. And I mean, like a next generation set of functions. The idea being that. These, assuming the big quantum machines actually do happen, and again, it's like these are fast enough that there's no reason not to switch over to them. And that's the point, right? At some point, because remember, the other danger that we've talked about is that things that are encrypted today cannot be decrypted today, but they could be decrypted tomorrow. So so th this is why the NSA has that massive facility in Nevada, where which is why Vegas's lights are dimmer now than they used to be, is that the, the NSA is just storing everything. They're like, well, we can't encrypt it yet, but we think that once quantum comes along, we'll be able to retroactively decrypt all this crap that we've been storing. So... Let's just keep it because storage doesn't cost anything. So the point is we want to switch over to post-quantum crypto as soon as we know that we can trust it, assuming that it's not going to be a lot slower. And these algorithms are not slower than the ones we have. They're just bigger and different. Um, we want to switch over so that we so that we start giving the NSA stuff that oh sorry about that but uh, this is the dilithium crystal quantum <laughs> I love it crypto and uh, your SOL mm -hmm. so yeah so um, and by the now, way you can't crack these dilithium crystals <laughs> <laughs> so I I obviously have no problem with the idea that adopting advanced post quantum cryptography under the name dilithium crystals will is like what we ended up with mm -hmm, but i have mm -hmm. to say leo that in scanning through all of the candidate entries from which these four winners were selected i did breathe a sigh of relief when i saw that the quantum algorithm named frodo <laughs> had not won <laughs> i i would have a hard time yeah. choosing frodo no. You know, as my post-quantum <laughs> solution. I refuse to use an algorithm with hairy toes. I'm sorry. It's just not going to happen. Thank you. On yes. that note, I'm going to take a sip of water. <laughs> <laughs>